All right, so um, I will call to order a meeting of the Strategic Planning Committee on March 19th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in um, room 208. And um, Alderman Michael Bryan. Present. Um, Kim Kleiner. Here. Ray Garino. Here. Commissioner Grant. Here. Commissioner Plant. Here. Commissioner Moriarty. Here. Um, David Pinsano is not able to be here this evening. Um, and Mike Rosenblum. Here. Oh, you know what? I was looking at Chris's name. <coughs> Sorry. Great. Glad you were able to join us. Um, and Alderman Dowd is also unable to join us. And also in attendance, we have um, Brian McCarthy. Tim Cummings um, from Economic Development and Sarah Marchant from um, Community Development. So just um, for everyone who's returning and new, if you would just introduce yourselves and name the board or commission you're from and um, start with Ms. Kleiner. Uh, Tim <coughs> Kleiner, I'm from the Mayor's Office. Kevin Moriarty, Board of Public Works. Raymond Garino, Board of Education. Paul Grant, Board of Fire Commissioners. Mike Rosenblum, National Airport Authority. Matthew Plant from the Police Commission. Brian McCarthy, Board of Aldermen. Michael O'Brien, Board of Aldermen and <coughs> Chairman Infrastructure Committee. And Marianne Melissa Golia, I'm Chair of Planning and Economic Development. Um, so the first uh, welcome. And if your board or commission or your office, but I think you have, haven't let um, Sue know who your alternate is. If you would let her know, just so we have a, a full list and we'll know who to make sure we get all the information out to. Um, the first order of business is to elect a committee clerk. So do I have a nomination? Anyone? <laughs> Brian? <laughs> I, I, I know and Michael Bryan. I know he do a good job. Okay. Um, Alder, um, Commissioner Garant. Okay. But he's not the normal attendee of the meeting. Yeah, he is. It's, oh, it's infrastructure. It's infrastructure, it's yeah. yeah. Um, nominated Alderman O'Brien. Um, any others, or do I have a motion to close nominations? Motion to close nominations. Okay. Um, motion by Ms. Kleiner to close nominations. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And I'll abstain because of conflict. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so um, we, um, all those in favor of Alderman O'Brien as clerk? Aye. 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 And um, Alderman O'Brien is our new clerk. Here, you can continue uh, where you. I left off. Thank you so <laughs> much. do it from memory. <laughs> so, um, this evening, well, first of all, public comment. I don't see anyone here. Um, I sent out yesterday, Sue had sent out, and then I sent out um, an additional copy of the draft goals and objectives mm -hmm. that were developed at our last meeting. And as I indicated in the email I sent, goals um, six and seven were not addressed um, because it was right before we did the vote on the um, Performing Arts Center. And so we thought the outcome of that would probably have some impact on how we move forward in developing the rest of this. And before I go any further, um, Sarah and Tim, if you would like to just pull chairs up and join us, feel free. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. No. Here. 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 Sarah. Sarah. Around the yeah. back. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> so, um, what's the pleasure of the committee? I know some of you were here when we developed the first five. Um, Others of you are seeing these for the first time. Do we want to review those? And did you have any immediate thoughts as you kind of looked at that work? Or is there anything that 
as you review that you thought, oh, I want to make sure we talk about this at the meeting, or do you want to move on to goals six and seven? Commissioner Grant. Been quite a while. Okay. Since we met. And I, I don't know, I think there might be a benefit. To, to just go to through? Reviewing. Okay. In the, in the All right. So um, the goals were originally developed um, probably a year ago. And then at our last meeting, which was in October of 2017, we went through and did the objectives. So um, the first goal was that the city shall promote the vibrancy of downtown and clearly communicate regarding a sustainable approach to economic development. So as you look through those, um, you see that there are a number of objectives. And I'm, Brian, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking promote vibrancy of downtown is out of place there. I thought this was about clearly communicating. But just that's just my note that I looked at. Um, but the objectives are all about communication. And we talked at length about how we communicate as different boards and commissions and programs across the city and even with staff communication and then also um, how we communicate with with the city in general so um, as, as you look at those are there thoughts you have or comments or things you think we should reword And I would say, um, and, and Kim, correct me, but my my memory from our last meeting is that we spent a large chunk of time talking about this. I think we did. This it's, was... Um, so I'm a little confused about the goal in relation to some of the items underneath it. That's why I'm saying I, I'm... Um, I'm looking at this and wondering about it too because I thought it was clearly just about communication across the city. Anyone else's memory from being here? Well, it's been a while, hasn't it? We did this. And, and Sue, um, <clears throat> Sue tried to do this from listening to the tape and not being at the um, part of the meeting. She was just trying to go through the tape and put this together. So if we don't think this is correct, we can just make a note. But I do believe this was truly about communication as a big topic. Tim. So if I may, um, my understanding or recollection is that um, through the prior exercises that led up to that October meeting, uh, the goal, the number one goal of economic development and the vibrancy of downtown rose to the top. But the conversation at the October meeting really focused more on more of a marketing perspective or a communication perspective and how we can more clearly communicate in general um, was, you know, of particular concern or note. Okay. So that's, so I, 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 and I do want to point that out because I found it interesting because if you go to goal seven, right. you're talking about the downtown at goal seven. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think there was a little bit of a conflict. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so... In looking at this in terms of communicating and how it supports what we do on a bigger um, stage, are there thoughts about what's here? And yeah, Ray. Can you can I make suggestions for adding objectives? Sure. Um, I thought that we could uh, add a couple of objectives. Maybe the city could adopt the complete streets policies. And if you're talking about um, sustainability that is <clears throat> I guess enhancing walking and bicycling infrastructure yes and, and, and that speaks to sustainability sustainable approach to economic development for recreation for commuting um, 
The other thing I was thinking about was Wi-Fi for the downtown. I don't know if that's been talked about having a, um, just free Wi-Fi in the downtown. It'll help people, you know, help the downtown be more attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, Sarah, would you want to talk about the complete streets, or I can't remember, is it, is it in your shop? It, I mean, it started with my shop, I think, with a grant that we got a couple right. of years ago, but it's absolutely a citywide effort. It includes DPW and economic development mm -hmm. downtown. Um, but it, so we've, we've started on that road, and I think DPW has put a lot of things in place to move them down that road, but we don't have an official complete streets policy at this time in the city. So. If we talk about that, is that something that we would want to maybe nest under goal number four, providing a healthy and safe community? It might work under number two as well, part of your infrastructure. Yep. Tim, <coughs> I saw you. Yeah, no, two. Two? Yeah. All right. I'm just going to put notes on the side here. And, or anyone have strong feelings? Two? Co infrastructure? If memory serves, when you did the when we did the matrix a year ago, Complete Streets was on there right. as an infrastructure item. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'll just all right. I will. I've made a note to include that here. If you wanna, you and I can compare notes afterwards okay. as we go through, um, and. Then the free Wi-Fi, do you want to comment? Hasn't been that concept and that has never been brought up previously. So this is, that would be a newer element to the conversation. Is there not Wi-Fi available downtown now? In some places. In I some places. Say, yeah. We did have an effort to get it right. free everywhere about five or six years ago, maybe right. a little more, and it, it just never went anywhere. I mean, most people are providing it, you know, in their shops and stuff, so. It's redundant. Yeah, and Xfinity also has, if yeah, you yeah. an Xfinity. I mean, Xfinity has done right. the mm -hmm. public servers since then, so. And uh, maybe if I may point to just house cleaning, I should have, Brian should have, uh, I'm not really taking notes on everybody who speaks, so I think we're being recorded, so if you could just say your name before you speak, too, just so that it can't get uh, transcribed properly. Yeah, and so. that's why I'm trying to recognize you also right, and use your job. name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So what what is the feeling about in looking at infrastructure and supporting development downtown? Is Free Wi-Fi, something we need to be like, yeah. Is it uh, something, Mike. Matt, Matt plan, I'm sorry, Matt. Is yeah. there something? Is it something we don't already have? To all of McCarthy's point, I wonder if we figure out where it isn't to see if we need it. Well, the other question is: Is it something the city should provide, or is it something we should just encourage the businesses on Main Street to provide? Because I believe the effort I'm remembering and, and you're referring to, um, the chamber was a driver behind that at that time. Yeah. And Alderman uh, O'Brien. Yes, thank you, Alderman O'Brien. I could see also, too, a great benefit to both the police and fire if it was talking the whole city as a whole because depending upon where the emergency incident would be, it could give instant access. I know I use my own personal cell phone and hopefully I get a hotspot, you know, at mm -hmm. times uh, when I was on the fire department, but it would be nice to have, uh, to look at that. And I don't know if we lead into that aspect, does that open up the door for granting to uh, some form of federal grants available to improve the commun uh, communication infrastructure within the city as well. Mm -hmm. So it might be something to throw out there to discuss in the future. Okay, so would we want to look at that under goal number one? Thoughts, feelings around economic development in downtown? Really. Okay. Um.
Any other thoughts? Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. <clears throat> I looked at this, and I know this is a work in progress. Uh, however, I know I wrote something and worked with uh, Mrs. Marchand on it before and everything, and something with the building department and everything, and something in the form of redress of grievances. You know, I don't know what that would be fit into the communication part of it. But let's say what happens if somebody has a complaint with one of our particular departments or something like that. Um, do we have a structure available to, that it will go through the mayor's office or depending upon the subject matter, it could be something with the uh, uh, police protection, it could be something with a fire marshal issue, it could be, you know, pothole type of things. And that's a communication aspect so that the uh, citizens can get proper communication to have a uh, you know, the grievance is redressed, and if it's a separate committee, I don't know, as an idea, but to look at that and something to handle something along that lines. Yeah. Um, Raymond Garino, yeah. um, there's something called See It, Click It, Fix It, mm. and uh, I, I think some people are um, familiar with that. It might be worthwhile for the city to just look at. You, if you have your, your smartphone and you see a pothole, you take a picture of it, and you download it, and it goes, it goes to... Uh, sort of a central place like the mayor's office and they'll and they'll pass it on to a department whatever department uh, and 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 what happens is you can monitor it so so someone will will respond to it and then say okay we were there and we, we did that like a like a like a truck sometimes they'll hit like they'll take a wide turn and hit the uh, traffic signal and move the uh, the pedestrian signal or something like that and it's facing a different way you just see it click it fix it sometimes they're minor things sometimes it could be major things like someone dumps a bunch of garbage on the side of the road or something like that, but it 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 might uh, address some of those things that you're talking about. Maybe mm -hmm. not everything that you're talking about, mm -hmm. but yeah. But. And uh, Michael Bryan, I do agree with you, and that that's a perfect solution. I was thinking something a little bit more. Put your boots on a little bit deeper than mm -hmm. something like that. You know, yeah. um, let's say if a restaurant has a particular problem with something that's going on, where can they go to? So they can feel that they'll get some form of mediation. Mm -hmm. And this goes to help with in enabling businesses a more welcoming type of community in that, you know, mm -hmm. if they were saying some problems with uh, occupancy or something like that, you know, right, that they right. can, you know, a place where they can go and get proper mediation, you know, and that's what I'm thinking of. The laws are quite, ex you know, black and white. Yeah. And I think what we're talking about is not going against the law, but I think what we're trying to do is trying to come up with an amicable solution so that they can understand why the laws are such and that they have a chance that they can feel that their grievances have been heard and that it can be re you know, given a good explanation and mediated in a more friendly atmosphere, if you understand, than something antagonistic as saying, well, the book says this. Right, right. Commissioner Grant and then Ms. Clark. Yeah, to uh, Alderman O'Brien's point, there is a uh, appointed board in this city, which mm -hmm. I don't think ever meets, which is to do with code enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, we do the building code board of appeals. It's the fire department. It's combined. We recently combined okay. the building code and the fire code board of appeals. But, that, uh, but, yeah. Yeah. but there's right. I don't think anybody outside of knows that there is exists mm -hmm. a way to um, okay. try to mediate. Appeal. Code, yeah, appeal and mediate. They, they do Code meet for the builders now they exist because the issues do get. But, but sometimes it may be the, just a homeowner or. Yeah. You know. A homeowner might know it, but. You know, but I, I didn't, I don't think the fire board had, had met very many In a very times. long time. Yeah. yeah. We right. did recently combine the two boards together and we did recently hear, have a grievance that came through and was addressed. Um, to that board, but it is it is rare too because we do have people who, we work with people pretty well and explain okay. why things are the way they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kleiner. Um, so the process is a little different depending upon the division. So in the mayor's office, we have a constituent services individual. Okay. And that person is contacted depending upon the issue. Um, it may be forwarded to the division director that handles the division directly. It may be forwarded to the constituent services person at DPW since they now have their own full-time constituent services um, and communications position. 
or it may be forwarded to my office to be dealt with by the mayor. Mm -hmm. um, but that person is a direct contact, meets with them, speaks with staff, realizes all the details around the question or the item at hand, um, and researches it before passing it along. Thank you. Uh, I'll do my Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, Ms. Meyer, thank you for hitting the nail right on the head. That's exactly where I was going with it. And probably, we probably need to grow that a little bit better. Would you say so and put that as part of the communication mix? Or is it solid? It's there now. I mean, the board's there. The group is there. Um, we do need to develop um, or working on procedures with them, but they are there and available. Maybe the communication in general was just part of um, the options the ways of doing business, just in the larger doing business. Mm -hmm. Director Cummings? Uh, what I'm hearing from the group is it sounds more like what you're looking for is someone to be more like an ombudsman to help facilitate conversations. That's not an uncommon role that economic development plays, more to help people who aren't as familiar with the process, um, you know, how it works, why it is the way it is, give, you know, play a neutral third party in facilitating a conversation to help the respective departments that have jurisdiction over a permitting issue and the private sector understand what it is that they may or may not need to do to be able to get to their end goal. So, and that, and that does happen, and we probably just need to do a better job communicating and marketing that service that we have available, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely something we can do. Yeah, in, in listening to all of the conversation, it sounds like another bullet might just be communicating the whole process for addressing concerns and, and very clearly identifying what's there and targeting. If it's a general sort of thing, this is where you call, but if it's something more specific, it might go to the existing committee, but just mark it out there, what we have in place and how to access it. Um, and rolling all of those things together. Any any thoughts? Any other additional <coughs> thoughts about the first goal? So, Ms. Kleiner. So does the first goal then does is just about clear clearly communicating? It's not about the because the vibrancy of downtown is really handled by right. seven. Right. And you don't just have clear communications to have a sustainable approach for economic development. You have a right. clear communication for a number of reasons. Right. Um, but I do want to correct some things that have changed yes. during this. Um, so the mayor no longer has a mayor's newsletter. Okay. Um, that is being handled by individual um, divisions. So uh, if you haven't seen, DPW has a, a mm -hmm. brand new one and they do a fantastic job. Um, but most of the divisions are putting out some sort of their own um, newsletter and if everybody isn't getting out, so we can certainly make sure that you do. Um, how we communicate those to the general public is probably something we should address. Whether we put them all in an area that is accessible um, for people to go on, kind of similar to the YouTube. If mm -hmm. Now everything's getting posted on YouTube and people can go out and see which, mo which meeting they'd like. Maybe we do something along the okay. idea of that. But I just wanted to let you know we're not issuing one from the mayor's office. So maybe directing people how to access this instead of subscribing, division, depending yeah. upon. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else there that's changed? 
um, uh, Kevin yeah, Murray. Kevin. So are, are we suggesting just to take that out, that first part of that sentence, and move it to? Uh, yeah, and so it makes it more clearly what our objective: the city shall promote, or the city shall clearly communicate, right, and, and take that first part out mm -hmm. and put that into the goal number seven. Yes. I almost think you have to redraft the, mm -hmm. the first one. And I, I looked at that, and I had lots of notes on my paper from before, and I was like, I'm going to leave this because my memory may not be right, so I will go back and... Both the vibrancy of downtown and the sustainable approach to economic development don't seem like they'll right. be there. It, uh, thinking about it, so the real thing we have to attack is that the, the communications have to be... We have to take the other role. What we do now is we find solutions to problems that are easy for the city to implement and use. We're not doing it from the, what makes it easy for the residents to get service from the government. Things like our website, that, mm -hmm. and the website's atrocious. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Just, you I thought know. it was me. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, you know, I, I buy stuff from Amazon all the time. I use Facebook. I use YouTube all the time. It's like those things are just so easy and naturally flowing. And, and a lot of you know, I, I I get annoyed when I when I get to a website that asks me for my email address twice. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's just we could fix this, and and it's we we need to have the processes inside so that you can use an app, an app or multiple apps that allow people to report problems, and we sort out how to how to move that. You know, it's it's really nice in the back end; it's easy to use for us. But there are systems that do that, and I'm sure we can make all that work together. Ms. Kleiner. So this conversation actually came up in in our office today. Um, so we've hired a um, great addition to IT mm -hmm. who's been looking at the website and has actually sent to our office um, a number of suggestions to improve the flow. And um, we thought this is really a conversation that's much larger than just the mayor's office. Mm -hmm. um, so whether we formed a committee <coughs> um, to look over those types of changes, um, and I would suggest some public input um, to look at those, um, but really we haven't moved forward for that reason. Um, Excuse me, Kim. <laughs> Thank you. So, there, there are suggestions that have been given to us. So, you're already in the works to move forward? Open to recommendations for a, a committee to look at that, um, or how we reach out to the general public to get citizens that would be willing to sit down and sit through some functionality type meetings and mm -hmm. um, but I mean it's a concern we've heard um, I think shortly after Mayor Donches took office we did a survey um, the survey results didn't come back uh, noticing a lot of different items that could be changed um, so we didn't move forward with any changes at that point um, but it's certainly a conversation that we're, we're willing to have if, if you want to suggest how we should do, do it. Okay. That's good to think about. Any other thoughts about communication? Should we go on to two? A safe and well-maintained... Oh, I'm sorry, Matt, did you have your hand up? I did. It's, no, it's fine. It's, it's gone. You sure? <laughs> yeah. No, I, just, I was going to ask about the, the communication, how this was all unfolding. We're talking about communicating more, yet 
you you're not sending the newsletter out. Aren't they more effective if they if we get them out to people rather than waiting for people to come see them? Yes, I I think it would be so. DPW's newsletter now it's people sub subscribe, which is how the mayor's office newsletter when we were producing it was, and honestly, that system wasn't working. So the the subscribers that you saw were people the the people that you see at the town <coughs> halls and the and members of our local mm -hmm. government and city. I mean. It just wasn't reaching. So I'm wondering if you put them out on an area that citizens can see or go to, would that create a different result? Uh, and I don't know the answer to that question. But certainly, you know, there's the library newsletter, there's the school newsletters. I mean, each school puts out its own newsletter. Um, there's tons of information in the city. It's just getting it into our residents' hands. Okay. I just probably not the topic for this meeting. I was just kind of curious oh, how it curious fit into the too. communication thing. That's all. Alderman O'Brien. Well, thank oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. And um, then actually, Commissioner Grant. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I wonder if we make effective use of Channel 16 with these programs. Are they scheduled? Is yours scheduled? At certain times on Channel 16 to see the DPW report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. And is that a place to put a slide even right. to get Scroll. information? Go there, you know, go to this location. Mm -hmm. Right. Or even advertise our YouTube channel. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. Sarah Marshall. Yeah. I mean, excuse me, but we we hear constantly about collection of curbside. Collections, right? Yeah. But we, but we don't hear any other things. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, and one of the things we talked to about, and I think it's like the second bullet here, is just how are we u utilizing Channel 16? Are we really maximizing mm -hmm. our use of it? Because there are a lot of people who watch it and then share information with people in there their circles. So even if a lot of people aren't watching it, I always get the sense that the information is being disseminated through word of mouth. <coughs> and Alderman O'Brien and Thank Ms. Well, Kleiner. I'm kind of hoping in the future we do with what you said, Kim, with the uh, restructuring the new website. Because I'm used to going like Alderman McCarthy says, going on the back end of things and I know where to go. But for somebody new to the city, if it was a little bit more friendly on the website, to your point exactly, sir, that if they could come up and it's clearly designated, you want schools, boom, you want this, boom. Right now you have to go to the school website, you know what I mean? It just would. So I think if we focused on restructuring the, uh, and continue with that city website, I think this will clean up a lot of that communication issue directly with that. And I think, you know, because that could be the catch basin for one shop information for the city. Right there. Okay. Commissioner Grant. Yeah, relative to the website, this current website versus the old website. Mm -hmm. in the old website, if you went to the calendar and it said Board of Alderman meeting, you could click on that and you could go get directed right to the agenda. Now you have to find out there's a meeting and then you have to go find out, you have to go back to agendas and minutes. It's, mm -hmm. it's not. Intuitive. Mm -hmm. Intuitive. Yeah. Right. You know, if you just click on Board of Alderman right. meeting, it's right. there. Yeah, it's become more complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess in terms of the newsletters, um, I must hate to say this, but if there's a way to somehow combine them, so if you get to one or you go one place, then you can choose them. And right. so people see what's there because I think people know there's the city the, or the school department newsletter. I'm not sure they're as familiar with all of the other newsletters. So if there was some place you could go online and it just had newsletters and you click on it and you're like, oh my gosh, Parks and Rec has a newsletter and you know, streets or whoever and you could see just what the menu is. Um, that also might just steer people. 
in that direction. I apologize, I have to go. I had one more thing tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, shall we move on to a safe and well-maintained infrastructure and utility system that is coordinated with existing needs and plans for future growth? Um, and we've talked about current projects, paving, wastewater, and hydro, um, maintenance for other facilities, um, and I just noticed that there's one little dash hanging out there that wasn't mm -hmm. put in line, but creating a virtual facilities department and coordinate citywide maintenance. Um, and then utility system coordination with existing needs and plans for future growth. So thoughts about that. And I have a question. The resilience process that we're going through, does that... Would you see that tying in here? I'm, as I'm thinking about reading about that, that that may be part of what gets rolled into here. But I, I wasn't sure if that was the place. Yeah, resiliency planning. Yeah. Um, definitely would be good for infrastructure. And Director Cummings or Ms. Kleiner. Maybe one of you could speak to it more intelligently than I can. Would either of you want it, just for people watching, to just explain what it is? I hate to put both of you on the spot. I know very little, but I'd be happy to tell you what I know. Please share. So it's uh, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development. It's my understanding that our Emergency Management Department uh, received a grant um, and uh, Director uh, Justin Cates is now executing on an initiative to do some quote-unquote resiliency planning, which is looking at our infrastructure, looking at what would happen if uh, uh, a disaster occurred and how we would want to plan uh, moving forward if we had to actually do something. Um, for instance, if we ever saw something as extreme as uh, Hurricane Katrina down in New Orleans, and what New Orleans needed to do so that they could be back up and running effectively. And that is a, a, a plan that's being worked on right now at emer emergency management. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ms. Kleiner. So the, there, are, there are members or representatives from pretty much every um, city division that are included uh, in those meetings and from my understanding, there's also a flood mitigation mm -hmm. plan that needs to be updated this fall, and that is part of um, this initiative. They've rolled, worked that into it as well. Um, they are looking at how our city divisions will um, work to help residents should there ever be some catastrophe. So they're including members uh, from public health um, in that conversation and the emergency preparedness um, department out of public health as well. Were all of, are all of you familiar with it or were you aware of it? Because I think there was information on the website at one point. I think that's where I read about it. I don't. Okay, well just so. You're aware of it. Yes, Alderman O'Brien. Well, thank you. Uh, I, th this is extremely important. It, it, and it doesn't have to be as catastrophic right. like Mr. Cummings says with uh, Hurricane Katrina. I understand it's on the horizon. We're going to be tearing up uh, East Hall Street and Temple for uh, sewer repair. So that's going to be uh, a great effect with the people coming over to and from Hudson and everything because it's a main artery into the city. So uh, there's some planning that needs to be done along that, I'm sure, for structure with police and fire and everything else and as far as the uh, traffic access. And it should be well put out there that uh, this major sewer work is going down, closing down a major artery. And that's something that could fit right into that planning as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll just add that to goal number two. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you see that you think is missing or?
Let's go to goal number three. NASHA will continually improve the quality of lifelong education for all citizens so they are well prepared for life and careers in the 21st century. And as you look at this, um, you can see as you look at those objectives, um, we're really looking bigger than just public education, K through 12, but looking at um, connecting people across the age ranges um, to training and opportunities to support their ability to be employed. So I don't know if people have other thoughts. Um, and that first one, I'm not sure why that's there. I'm going to cross that out. Um, city's role in supporting businesses and coordinating with high schools and community colleges. Training programs, career days within and internships, coordinating volunteers from business to work in the schools, coordinating businesses and institutions of higher ed to provide training. So any other thoughts? Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. And my apologies. Can we step back just for a brief second to go? Only a show? brief one, yes. Okay. <laughs> Please. I was looking where to fit this in, and with goal number two, any support that can go on with uh, current work with the uh, the uh, Boston the Worcester Surface Transportation Initiative that we're working on. Uh, is there anything this strategic uh, planning committee wants to get behind the uh, development of commuter rail and such into that? Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to, to add it in commuter rail. So, do you want to just add it? Um, we'll add it as a standalone bullet. Mm -hmm. As an objective, sure. Transportation. If I may yeah, throw this big thing to Michael O'Brien, <clears throat> it has the uh, support from the corner office with the mayor, and it seems to have overwhelming. Uh, municipal support, and I'm very proud of our, uh, uh, the majority of our national delegation in the last vote, I, in case you didn't catch it, uh, $12 million was put back into the 10-year, you know, plan, which was <clears throat> very good. So anything, yes. so it looks like it's going, and, and, and to enhance that, any support to keep it right up in the, uh, the front burner as we developed this great asset, I think, you know, for the city. Mm -hmm. Along the same lines, it might be a good idea to have a bullet in the infrastructure goal about the airport. I was thinking the same thing. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I was looking at this, and, and I know um, at the last meeting we had conversation about the airport, and I was, I was just trying to remember if it was under goal number one in terms of supporting economic development or goal number two, but... Um, if you're comfortable with us putting airport under number two around infrastructure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. So, um, other thoughts or in looking at this, things that you think we should be adding in there around education? Or do you think that pretty much captures Yes, um, Commissioner LaPlante, or Plant. Plant. <clears throat> Happens all the time, don't worry about it. Um, I wonder if we put something in there, uh, I think a big, with our aging population, mm -hmm. uh, there's a program at Riviere called RISE, mm -hmm. where senior citizens can get I wonder if we do something in our schools that maybe uses these people to help the kids that are in school and also something available to the adults who might want to do some learning themselves. And I think that does a few things. It gets people involved in the community and involved with others at a time in their life when they're not working with people with whom they work. So they might be getting more isolated. and 
one of the things we hear about when we have a storm or something, say check on your check on the neighbors. I wonder if this just enhances those relationships prior to that. So how it helps would, the community. How would you word that? What what are your thoughts in terms of I think probably Mr. O'Brien got all of that verbatim, right? Yeah. <laughs> the little box in the center of the table did that. <laughs> so incorporate <laughs> Uh, uh, develop a system where to involve uh, senior citizens, and I, I don't know about the description of that, in the education process. And then under that it's maybe make some courses available to them, maybe some of them could help with students who need coaching or need uh, extra help. Right? So really looking at both options, and looking at a retired members of our community who might be interested in additional lifelong learning opportunities as well as looking at opportunities for them to mentor or be involved in supporting Contribute. the education of others. Sure. Okay. Alderman O'Brien, I can hear your... Yeah. Your thoughts, yeah, yeah. Come out. <laughs> well, you know, and I think this is a great job with the elderly, but thinking back, and I'm looking at goal number four, I'm not trying to get ahead of you, but we're talking about education, and we have such an opiate pro uh, problem, and uh, so if we put down, I don't want to specifically put the opioid problem, because it could also be futuristic problems with tobacco and other type of things, and I think if we start talking about education, can we intermingle it with health and trying to promote uh, as long a good educational system within the city, but also provide it to a good healthy lifestyle. I think that's what type of thing, bullet you know? four under number okay, four is speaking fine. to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. In terms of promoting healthy lifestyle. I see a crossover though. And I see the cross within yeah. the education. And I think, you know? I think in terms of promoting healthy lifestyles we went down that same route we talked mm -hmm. about right now it's opioid education but at a later time or in two weeks it could be something else right. like so say tobacco. again thinking big umbrella and what are the systems we want to see in place that can then allow us to do the targeted mm -hmm. education from a health and safety perspective Ms. Kleiner, I can hear your so, wheels spinning too. <laughs> well, so I do agree with Alderman O'Brien, um, but I'll, I'll give you one that kind of goes to goal number three with training programs. And, and I'm going to caveat it by first saying that unfortunately everything that we do, we do with the, in the city revolves around money. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> having available money. Um, so let me put that out there first. Um, but we just applied for a grant um, to provide um, peer recovery training. So mm -hmm. these are this is one area that we know we don't have enough boots on the ground, people trained to do this. And it's generally an area that you'll see um, older people that may be retired that will go and take the training and kind of a, a second uh, type of mission. Um, so if we get the grant, um, we would start and we would have four different training um, programs that people would be able to go through. So we could put approximately about 120 um, boots on the ground. We'd train them, we'd pay for their state certification. Uh, classes because that's one thing that there's a large amount of fees required so people that are looking to go into this field generally can't pay those fees. We need to look at where we know as a city are our weak spots mm -hmm. and figure out how we're going to train individuals or retrain individuals that may have already worked in the workforce to fit those spots um, so that we're creating a workforce that benefits the city. 
Um, and this is one of the things, so everybody hope we get the grant. And and I I would agree with you. I think that that really is preparing people for careers in the 21st century because it's just an ongoing problem. Mm -hmm. Substance abuse and mental health issues and people to support the work of Ladex and, and do that work out in the community. Yeah. But, Alderman uh, O'Brien. But you said something, <clears throat> yes, I agree with you 100%, but you said something in the back portion of that. Um, when I was on the fire department, I went to the Adult Learning Center, and I wonder where they are, and probably we need to look at that. Uh, because, like you say, into readjusting the workforce is what I'm specifically talking about, and getting them into another type of field. When I was on the fire department, I took a couple of Spanish classes to be able to communicate with a lot of our new welcome people in the city and everything. And uh, where I did it was at the Adult Learning Center, and I was glad that they had that type of program there in order to improve, increase my communication mm -hmm. skills. I also took a sign language course as well, too. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, where are we with the Adult Learning Center, and they do they have a good enough program to assist with something like this, trying to get into like redirecting the workforce in case we had something to uh, help in career changes and the like. Yeah, and so <laughs> you're so you're so smart. Oh, Brian, <laughs> must have a segue. Uh, the partners in the grant are the city, the Adult Learning Center, and uh, Revive Recovery. So they would the Adult Learning Center would definitely be part of the training program. Uh, we are looking at how we use the Adult Learning Center, um, and retrain people. Um, expand our ESL classes, uh, either um, through the community center or out into the community. Um, they are a wonderful resource. We cannot mm -hmm. say enough about them. Um, unfortunately, as you know, there's um, some bills going through the state house right now that could impact them. So um, it's our job to make sure that they are protected and their resource is protected. Um, but they continue to work with the city on a number of other very important initiatives. And as we talked about these goals um, and objectives, once something is once something is um, finally, determined as this is what our plan is going to be, these bigger, um, broader objectives will then be looked at and certainly they would be something for the Adult Learning Center or RIV or even Nashua Community College to look at and for us to look at them and say, okay, this is the plan and I'm in Parks and Rec and what do I see or I'm in economic development and what am I hearing from people who want to locate here in terms of employees they're looking for in the, in the type of labor pool we have and the type of labor pool we need to further develop and so um, I think it's at that level that we would then start moving forward mm -hmm. and reaching out to the people who have those skills. Yeah, I'll 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 <coughs> Thank you. Uh, to that goal, do you see the need then, just to clearly, to add an additional to number two under that bullet, uh, the city's role, and to mention specifically the adult learning center within the group of the, uh, according with the high school's community college and the adult learning center within the community, include them, or are they, uh, that is to be assumed that they are included into that? Maybe what we say is high schools and other educational institutions. I'm, I'm reluctant to name. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing it out there. Yeah, no, I'm, and I don't know how other people feel, but I think when you start naming people, it's like you when you see people at the Oscars, oh my gosh, I forgot to thank my mother. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know other people's thoughts, but maybe just rewording it to educational programs within the city? Does that work? Because there may be someone who moves in that's not even here now mm -hmm. as an educational program. Correct. Right. That.
Any other thoughts about goal number three? Goal number four, the city of... Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Mr. Garino. I, think, I think this would probably could be either three or four, but um, should we... I, I'd like to see something that says uh, encouraging safe routes to school for uh, elementary kids and, and middle, middle school kids uh, to get uh, students walking, to encourage walking and bicycling to school. And could we add that? And I, I'm going to put this out. Um, Tim and Kim, would it be under that first bullet? I would put Safe Roots to School under goal four instead of right. goal That's, four. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just thinking where it says continue coordination of services and community programs, neighborhood watch, Safe Roots to School, mm -hmm. and add it under there. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's happened with that money? It's it, because it was like it used to be safe routes and then it got moved somewhere else. Uh, and, uh, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development. It is available every other year through what is now referred to as the TAP program. Right. I know it began with T and I couldn't think of it. <clears throat> what does TAP stand for? Transportation Alternative um, program. program. Perfect. Okay. Tim, do you know, or Kim, or I know, Mr. Green, or maybe you know, um, do we have any Safe Roots programs going right now? I mean, do we have money that's come into the city for probably the first four or five years I was on the board and also as a school board member, um, Bicentennial was involved in getting Safe Roots dollars. Mm -hmm. And I know some of the other programs, schools in the city were, but... I'm not sure where they are. I, I don't think Bicentennial is using that program anymore because I usually got asked to write a letter of support. But I don't know if other schools are using it. Do you know? I don't, I don't know of any schools that are participating. Um, each state has their own state coordinator. Right. So I don't know how, how it works in New Hampshire. Um, but there's, there's a couple of different parts of the program. One is where you have uh, the, the schools participate in, in Safe Routes to School and they organize volunteers and they have, they could do like walking uh, school buses and, and they have parents that walk the kids right. back and forth. So that, that helps reduce stranger danger and things like that. Um, well, first they do an assessment to see how many walkers they have to make sure it's a good walk, you know, walking school. And then there's another part of the program that, that has the, like, adding sidewalks and, and mm -hmm. the, the infrastructure component right. of it. Right. Yeah, yeah Alderman O'Brien. <clears throat> I don't know if it's still continuing or if it still remains in the past, but somebody does put down occasionally uh, fresh paint mm -hmm. in the new Searles yeah, yeah. area. Right. <clears throat> it's a green zone and yep. lined on the side, and it seems to be whoever initiated deserves a compliment being the parent in that neighborhood the kids utilize it the right kids all walk within the green lines right. and uh, mm -hmm. it seems to work out very well yeah in our neighborhood so i like to see a sidewalk to there. follow than others it's i think a sidewalk would be better because he on a dope and i'm not yeah. going to hold my breath on sidewalks yeah. around yeah. the city yeah, yeah. 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 miss kleiner the last uh, plan that um, I saw in our office was a plan that was developed with engineering for Charlotte Avenue um, and to my knowledge that has not received state funding yet. Um, that was the last plan that I've seen submitted. There, there is, yeah, actually I did check with the National Regional Planning Commission that there is a, a TIP project for, for sidewalks on Charlotte Ave, I believe. Yeah. You just uh, I just remembered that. So, so it, it, it is programmed for for uh, for money for funding. So. That would yeah, be great. <laughs> that would, yeah, but my understanding in the past was always that that was never enough funding that the city had to then come up with because I the rest of it that's always been kind of the catching point. Um, it, I think it. It used to be, it, I think it's 80-20, um, used to be 100%, but yeah. 
Um, I think they went to 80-20 if they changed it. 80-20? Yep. Yeah, yeah. They put straight the safe rules went back to 80-20. Yeah. Yeah. Director Cummings, do you want to? Uh, nope, I'm good. Okay. I, I think everything. I will say that the TAP program is, is going to become available, I believe, uh, uh, the end of this summer. Okay, so um, goal number four, if there's nothing else, um, goal number five, the city of Nashua will effectively manage resources to ensure citizens receive great value for their tax dollars. And that is, I remember the exact wording of goal number five, um, regular review of the bonding schedule, facilities and maintenance schedules, analysis of workload, and coordination of services between city departments and with com community providers. Thoughts, comments? I can tell you as we got to goal number five, it was pretty late. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you that's the most comprehensive um, thought process that went into writing that. But um, other thoughts? Ms. Kleiner. So, I think number three, coordination of services between city departments and community providers mm -hmm. needs to be explored more widespread across the city. I think what we find is when we partner with other providers in the community, um, we, number one, don't duplicate services. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, a lot of these community providers will pick up um, additional tasks that are easy to work into their mission's goals. Um, and I know it has been extremely useful um, when we are comparing things um, through the community center and My Brother's Keeper, um, that working with our area agencies, we've been able to produce more results with less. Is, is that, does the term community providers in that bullet mean just social service agencies, or is that? I think it's everyone. Also, you know, companies that we deal with so are you thinking partners? Not, not even partners, but, but vendors. 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 But, oh, I was talking about in terms of the word providers. Yeah. Because it has that service delivery to maybe put partners because that would be a broader. Well, I'm just trying to figure out right. what, the, what the scope of the, bull, the bullet is. is it? So why couldn't it apply to both? Well, it probably can, but... It can. Yeah. But I think your point's well taken. There, there are organizations that um, you are able to partner with who, because of the nature and the focus of their work, they have data much more readily available. They've got systems in place to access services or data or even employees that you would have to set up a whole new system in City Hall. Like, there's not a job description for that, but if they get paid out of their agency, then we can hire them and you already have that job description. So you can do that kind of partnering that really facilitates implementation of new programming. Yeah, because I know when I worked in Baltimore with the Head Start programs, I was part of um, the housing department, Head Start, but we worked with agencies that had the appropriate titles and we didn't have to develop daycare worker one positions because they had them. And it just facilitates the whole process. Anything else about that in terms of managing resources as we come into budget season and we're all thinking about that? 
All right, so the almost blank page. Um, the city of Nashville will make the city a regional center for the arts, culture, and recreation. And um, we, as we went through this process and arrived at these goals, there was a number of items that talked about um, recreational activities here. And the decision and the thinking, and those of you who were here helped me, but um, the, the process and the thought at the time was that that's really one big um, goal and, and it's all stuff that will bring people here. And it's marketing us as a place to be, to have an experience and not just driving by. And these are the experiences. So um, we had things like, you know, hiking and doing trails and biking and um, accessing the water in there under recreation. So thoughts about objectives for that area. And I have no real wheel for you there to kind of tweak. It's what are your thoughts? Uh -huh. I got one. Um, Please, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. Um, we seem to mention the Center for the Arts, and I think that's a work on progress and culture and recreation. And under recreation, that could be parks and many different things, but I think revital revitalization and enhancing uh, one of our greatest assets, and that's the National River. Mm -hmm. And to put that in there somewhere, of uh, looking at that, to have that as a community uh, focal point that uh, we can all, you know, get our feet wet with. <laughs> I want to put that in with, with the downtown. You would put that with the downtown. Yeah, because it's really, it's really specific to downtown, right? Uh huh. Well, no, it starts there, right? But it's going to go out to Mine Falls and. Mm. Uh, no, the, I mean, the river, the part we're going to develop is, is entirely downtown. There Why are, is that? Because that's where we need to do the work. I and mean, there are trails that go up to Mine Falls. Uh-huh, that's but, what I mean. Yeah. yeah, we've got to be a little careful about Mine Falls because I was, we got very successful with it once to the point where out-of-state mountain biking clubs were coming up here with mm -hmm. truckloads of bikes mm -hmm. and the result was the park was getting torn apart because there were more people in it than it could sustain. So we got to be a little mm -hmm. careful about promoting Mine Falls as a destination for more people than it will handle. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I, I agree with your Alderman McCarthy, but uh, I am envisioning we had to fit something like uh, utilizing the river and everything. I kind of would like to see at some point in the river uh, enhancing kayaking, you know, stuff like that, that people could come down and, uh, you know, rent something for the afternoon or something like that, whether that be a private entity or a municipal run type of thing. But promoting both it as a park structure but also as an opportunity to uh, allow private entities to come in and to help enhance and to develop something like that, you know. Maybe a, a nice little park, and wouldn't it be nice to grab a hot dog down by the river, <laughs> you know what I mean, and, and just enjoy lazy mm -hmm. Sunday afternoon, particularly in the good weather. So, you know. I think this bullet refers more to the arts concentration that we talked about, the Performing Arts Center and Visual Arts uh, you know, studios for artists, et cetera. Yeah, well, we we actually we talked about all of it because we said arts, culture, and recreation because we'd had the whole thing about the parks and biking and um, hiking and all of that. So, I think you know the arts and and the multicultural aspect of the city and what that brings in terms of um, recreation and and events was part of this. Um, but then we had also talked about that recreation aspect here. I, 
I look at this and the first thing I think of is marketing and, and how do we promote all of this within the region. And there's certainly been a conversation um, since the study um, with Americans for the Arts came out and looked at the economic impact. Um, so I think that part of, part of this is marketing, and I know at NPR's, at NRCP we are um, beginning a conversation about the regional nature of it. So that that Nashua is there, and that we're looking at it from a regional perspective. That's the part where we say. We'll support the arts in the town, so then we don't have to. No, no, actually, <laughs> that's, that's what, not what's happening. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> oh. I guess I see two different things there. The, there, there is the marketing goal for the city in general mm -hmm. and all of these things. And then there is the separate goal of creating an arts community that is sufficient to warrant the marketing effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, I under here, do we have as, as an objective um, support, providing support for the development of an arts community, and there's probably a better way of saying that, but. Yeah, I think that's what this, what right. this goal gets to. I think we're missing, we're now missing a goal of marketing the city. Mm, these are the marketing seven goals we get. Hmm? These are the. I, I understand that, but I don't see anywhere in here that covers Make marketing the city. Range. Well, I think we had talked about marketing being across all of this, though, at one point. Yeah, I'll, um, Commissioner Garant. Um, as I look at this goal and I, and I see uh, the word culture, um, does this include working with um, groups like, in March, the French American culture? that has that big march event mm -hmm. and, and to bring those into. Right. Would, <clears throat> would the art center be the focus for providing a, uh, a stage, if you will, for those activities? Not likely. No. Not likely. Oh, okay. The Performing Arts Center is going to be essentially a profit-making venture that breaks even. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other, and some of the other theater resources we have, like Court Street, would be the would be the ones that would provide, I think, support for those kinds of events. And and I also think some of those sorts of events, um, as as we look at what's happening with some of the things Great America Downtown's doing. Um, there may be an event, but it's got a number of venues that are being also hosted by businesses, um, which is, of course, then driving business not just onto the street, but actually into some of our businesses, much like the taste does, getting people into businesses. Yes, Mr. Garino. Maybe under this goal, we could put an objective to coordinate with groups uh, such as Great American Downtown uh, and other, um, talking about uh, uh, events like festivals, uh, cultural, cultural festivals, coordinate with, with these groups to, to market uh, the city in, on, on, on different events. And um, right now, Great America Downtown has um, a ca an event calendar that people can just 
directly organizations can mm -hmm. directly put things on and um, they are actually looking at updating what they have mm -hmm. and they're working with the arts community to look at something that will um, make that information much more accessible so someone right. who's coming to Nashua I don't know on their way to Montreal and they want to stop here and spend the night mm -hmm. they can go on the Great America Downtown website and right. not only see where to stay and where to eat, but also see what what might be going on. So instead of just spending the night, they may say, oh, well, we'll stay two nights and on Saturday we'll do whatever. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is that going on right now. Um, and that's not to say we shouldn't be supporting it, because I think it's really important that we do. And I know Tim's part of that. I know Sarah gives input. James Vale gives input. So there are people in the city mm -hmm. who are doing that. So just okay. to kind of have a sense of, of what's going on. But again, that doesn't mean it will always be going on because people change their priorities. So to have it in a strategic plan saying this is a priority, this is something we think should be worked on, it's not bad. Yes, um, Mr. Uh, Moriarty. Yeah, Mr. Moriarty. just a couple things on the recreation, even though this bullet, I guess, is more for the arts, is what uh, Walter McCarthy said, but as far as recreation, uh, one strategic goal f for the city should be a new boat ramp to access the Nashua River, because that's in terrible shape, and that would be key uh, for, to, uh, for usage. The other... The Nashua River or the Merrimack? I mean Merrimack, Merrimack. I'm sorry. Merrimack. The Nashua yeah, River's yeah, got yeah, a great yeah, boat yeah. ramp, right, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Merrimack River. Yeah. That, that is that is just horrible. Um, and people tell me that all the time. They don't want to use it more, and they can't even use the ramp. They have to go down to Lowell and come all the way up to Nashua. Uh, secondly, our uh, superintendent of uh, parks and recs would tell us that the fastest growing sport in Nashua right now is cricket. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't have a, a dedicated cricket field. Mm -hmm. And that should be another strategic planning goal is to have a cricket field. So a couple things. It's not the arts, but recreation is really important. But you know that that also ties in with some of the cultural things we do, and recognizing that there is a um, a cultural need for for the cricket fields also. Alderman O'Brien, I'm Thank sorry. Thank you. I, I do like drive by Main Down Simple Road, and I see on uh, Saturdays and Sundays in particular, uh, the Yatucky Farm area, overwhelmingly a lot of cricket. Someday I'm going to stop and actually learn how to play that bloody game, but I was Irish, so we never paid attention. But, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, that was mostly a British thing. But, uh, but anyways, I see it's very well, you bring up a very good point. It's very well attended by members of our community, and it's, uh, you know, pretty packed field, so it has a point. But taking a step back, I, I think that's something we could look at. Uh, the thing is, I think with this is, I think, we're really, when we start talking the regional center, we're more really focusing on the downtown and under this particular goal in a way, too. And I think that would encompass the river and that would encompass the art center and mm -hmm. everything else. So I think we're focusing on that. So to the end, like you say, with the river, I still want to put in it just a separate bullet of supporting any type of, uh, rec you know, river recreational mm -hmm. activities whether they may be specifically, but, you know, to have an open mind, whether it be kayaking or anything else like that. <clears throat> and, to, you know, Ms. Morardi, you brought up a very good point. The, that boat ramp is terrible shape, but it only gives the river access to the lower dam, and it doesn't come up to the higher point. And then I think when we're looking at the river and which part are we really trying to mediate and sell geographically right here. <clears throat> and I think the part that really people traveling down Main Street, I'm thinking the Main Street Bridge, and looking from both sides of the bridge, and that would be the focal point if we're looking at the downtown collectively with the art center and everything else like that. Although I'd be very supportive <coughs> of fixing that bloody boat ramp up there to access the Merrimack to get to the lower half of the uh, Nashua. 
but uh, you know, I think what we're talking. And then the boat ramp that is currently there is privately owned that we have access to. And uh, is that the one that the technology no, Nash is that a, the Nashua River? The Nashua River. The Nashua River. We have an agreement with them. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we have it's a private public type of agreement here with that. So you know, and I think the only other access is up by. Stella Stadium, mm -hmm. and I don't right. think right. the river is navigable at that point again because of the is it the Emmeskeg or well, yeah. Yeah. yeah well that from there it's navigable to from Mine Falls to um, uh, Reynolds Bridge, mm -hmm. and then the downtown one gives you access up to the bottom of Mine Falls essentially, mm -hmm. and Merrimack River one gives you the other house. So we have. Mm -hmm. Two of the three boat ramps are actually in fairly good shape, but the right. Merrimack one mm -hmm. desperately needs a replacement. Needs to be done. And I thought there was a a plan in place to do that, and yes. there is grant money available. That, right. Oh, super. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so you, you will see improvements so to the Gurley Park. So we should put there, because we're going to be able to meet it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. That's fun. I'm going to put down supporting National River access and uh, recreational opportunities, mm -hmm. State General. Yeah. Your tenth area. Um, yeah. Continuations of the rail trail acquisitions would be a good objective in there mm -hmm. as well. Another grant. Okay. That's already been approved. Uh, that's been mm -hmm. submitted. We believe funding will come. We, I mean, we should, in the not too distant future, be able to provide bike access from Hollis to Hudson. That would be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Miss Klein. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that the, so there's a grant to do the East Rail Trail um, down East Hollis as well. But I think when we as a city look at these things we can't just say how we're going to build them it's also how we're going to maintain them and keep them safe for our residents because it's always an issue that comes up all the time and we're constantly having groups that are having to go in and either clean up the rail trail or we'll send, you know, DPW down. And there's a reason that these things aren't getting the use that they possibly could. So as we think about how we're going to just build things, we can't think we're going to build and walk away. We have to think about how we're going to maintain them and keep them safe, keep them inviting. Um, it's it's a problem. It's a problem that we haven't quite figured out how to solve. So should we put that two. under goal number two? I mean, we we have well, something. I, I think it is under it's, goal yeah, number two. It's, yeah, a plan to, to maintain mm -hmm. and coordinate citywide maintenance. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. Can I ask the chair a question to sure. Kim? I, I know we have summertime help painting the cemeteries and working. Is there any park rec opportunities of summertime help? Such to answer what you pointed you bring up. Most of this area gets heavily traveled and gets, you know, the trash and different things. Would be the summertime, would be a time when you have most college students or something like that looking for some employment. I understand there was a drop off at one time, but if it comes back up, would they be able to look at having a, uh, a summertime ranger type of program where they would be responsible or any type of granting for the maintenance of these, you know, down, well, for the trails and different things like that, you know, and uh, supply them with uh, the proper equipment to do something like that. Come rangers. up with a ranger group. Yeah. You know? We had rangers until probably six, eight years ago. 
Is that something worth up. revisiting? Yeah. Get yeah. Ranger Rick back on patrol? Huh? They were cut out of the budget. So this is the first year that um, you'll see the mayor's internship program where um, four of those will be in Parks and Rec and oh, cool. DPW. We could certainly use more if there was more funding. I mean, that was funding that was specifically put aside, some in the mayor's office, some in economic development to provide these high school juniors jobs. Um, and they'll be doing grounds work and things of that sort. We could certainly use more. It's not lack of work <laughs> that we have. No, sure. <laughs> But I think what we have to do is actually come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. and we've got to understand, you know, every time we, we do this, I mean, you'll hear from Public Works, well, we don't have the staff to do it, but we don't have a plan for how much staff do we need to get all the right. things to work. Right. Good. Oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. Tim. Uh, all, all I was going to say was, is, is to Kim's point earlier, I also wanted to highlight that that, uh, we have already started working on one of the objectives already outlined and actually through a lot of work that Kim has done, we put into place an internship summer program, uh, which when this document was created, that wasn't actually in existence. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's going to be another objective that we can check off the box that we, we've achieved. And um, in terms of having a plan, if you look back at goal number two, we talk about um, a virtual facilities department coordinating citywide maintenance, and I think that that's where we need to develop that plan. <laughs> uh, is that done tomorrow, Kim? Yeah. We, you know, we do not have enough help right. in our city maintenance department, and it is absolutely amazing what Mr. Honeywell here at um, City Hall does it's with amazing. the buildings that he has to on a very limited staff um, mm -hmm. but we're not using the wide resources between school maintenance and city maintenance and library has a maintenance person and right. We're, right. we're just not using those right. effectively. And that's and I, you know, I've looked at this for a long, long time, and we'll, we'll never get a facilities department basically because of the pension systems. Mm -hmm. you know, it's impossible to take people out of public works and the school department and put them into a single department because you won't be able to... It would take you 30 years to do it because you'd have to wind down all the pension expenses. But I think it's important to have someone whose job it is to make sure that those things are happening. Because I know, you know, as you say, I mean, we've got basically one guy to do maintenance for the, the city buildings. The school department has a, has a <laughs> staff of tradespeople that I'm sure, I'm sure their plumber isn't busy all the time, I guess is the way I'd put it. Hmm. So, other things in terms of goal number six. Um, um, uh, one other, if I may. Yes. Brings up what uh, you say with staffing and everything, and as we're looking, uh, we, uh, I don't know, we should get into this, but uh, for the Art Center, we're going to be raising some monies and support and different type of things. And uh, um, would that also be an opportunity to have, look in as far as we're going to have uh, clean up and stuff like that, look at, uh, people of goodwill in the community they want to support summertime programs and stuff for our rangers or something like that and try to seek funding and everything if we cover it and indemnify them as far as the working as employees for us and everything and if they <clears throat> out of goodwill work into something like that to enhance and beautify the area we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. If I mean, this gets us into the <laughs> issue with union labor. We can't, 
Yeah, Absolutely. and I don't want to, and let me clearly say, I don't want to go there. No, not at all. That's not my intention. You just uh, did. Put the, you put that but, on the table, you go. But uh, the reason it's on the table, I was specifically, let me clearly back up and you know walk this backwards. That seems to be the Washingtonian speech nowadays. Uh, it's, I'm talking only about our summer type of programs. And that specific group that we hire only on a temporary basis, and that's all that that would be. And the model would be out there is City Year and Boston, many other different programs that exist in other communities, mm -hmm. and that's more specific. That has nothing to do with the uh, Boston, you know, unions or anything else like that. It's more selective, just to that specific. You know, how's that for a walk back? I That's thought good. you were going to, to go to buy a block. <laughs> buy a block. <laughs> <laughs> Director Cummings. Uh, may I suggest you consider some of the recommendations Duncan Webb had made in, in his uh, feasibility study? Um, one was a, 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 an arts cultural district mm -hmm. actually uh, codifying, um, you know, a zone. It's not uncommon for, for downtowns. Um, of, of Nashua's size to do like an overlay that promotes arts and culture in, in certain areas. Uh, that's one. Uh, two, um, you know, it, and I'm throwing this out there, I'm not saying that this is um, by any means uh, an objective one should pursue, but uh, he also talked a lot about trying to breathe in new life to 14 Court Street. Um, and then obviously trying to implement the Performing Arts Center. Those were the three major uh, recommendations uh, when uh, with the, the Performing Arts Center consultant. And regarding Court Street, I know some of us have been involved in conversations about that. Um, in terms of breathing new life into it, um, I don't know if that may... <laughs> um, I don't know if if another way of looking at that is um, is to look at just um, assessing the needs in the community and how to best make use of that facility to meet to meet the arts and cultural needs of the city, as well as of the of the city as a whole, as well as how that fits into the development of downtown because I think those are two separate things. I think we've got things going on citywide and then we've got things going on that are are downtown specific and, and I know as we've had conversations around the arts marketing plan, um, we've had those conversations. There's a lot that goes on that supports the downtown but there are also things that go on in the greater city. And so we need to kind of keep that in mind also. So I don't know what your thoughts are about that in terms of rewording a little bit of rewording the breathing new life into well, Yeah, whatever. Um, I, I just wanted to point thoughts. out some of these. No, I, I think that because I'm looking at this going, okay, the reason we put this aside was because of the Arts Center, and we haven't touched on that yet. So thank you. Okay, Ms. Kleiner. So... I, I would like to see how we could assess, assess the needs. I mean, what what is it that our residents are looking for that we don't have? And, and I wonder if we really have a good handle on that. Um, so I think we've had a number of conversations um, and we're, we're still having them. Uh -huh. um, what do we do with not only Court Street, the building, but that wonderful area in front of it uh -huh. that could be used for so much and could be its own cultural right. asset? Um, but I'm not sure that we understand really what it is that the citizens want. I think you'll find neither do they. <laughs> this okay. falls into the category of <laughs> when, when somebody said to Steve Jobs, you need to look at what your customers want and build that. And he said, how do they know what they want when I haven't shown it to them yet? And it's, it's I, I mean, and, and by the way, the last time we did this um, 
back in 2010, and we had meetings all over the mm -hmm. city. That was exactly what I think I got out of that was, you know, the long-term goals of the city where I want the pothole fixed in front of my house. <laughs> it's, you, you really have to have, you have to have a vision that, that comes from within, I think, to promote. You know, I, I think we, we can do that. You're right. We have, to, we have to figure out what it is that's missing. But you sort of have to make that up out of whole cloth, I think. I don't think the answer is out there to be found. Hmm. But I think we should have a goal of, of figuring that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think to your point, it's... And we talked about this when we first started meeting, that we're not about, at, at this point, we shouldn't be about, okay, we need all the potholes on Main Street fixed, and we need all of this fixed, but the bigger picture, that there should be a process for making sure that happens. Um, and I think not only Court Street, but other spaces, <coughs> if we end up identifying um, an arts and culture district, then how do we go about looking at uses within that district? So I think it's not just for Court Street and the plaza, but looking broader across the city for spaces and how do we use them. I, I sort of think one of the things we ought to do is get somebody whose job that is. You know, we, we, we got when we started to acquire the dams and started to have other things, we uh, hired somebody as a waterways and energy manager that knew about those things. Um, we ought to hire somebody who knows something about the arts. It's, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm willing to support the arts, but but I'm not. I, I'll be the first person to tell you I don't know what to do to do that. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I think finding um, someone whose position would be arts coordinator that is try, chases down those opportunities and tries to make them work. Well, we know I don't know anything. Yeah. I mean, we can't understand we that. Can't. It's an inside <laughs> joke, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, street tour. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I... Do we... Do we have that as a goal? I mean, do we look at identifying appropriate staffing. I mean, I think I would agree with you. I think at some point we grow this. Right now we're working with a lot of um, community organizations and volunteers who are trying to, to put things together and coordinate with your office and you know, Great America's doing it and City Arts and, and you know, and all these, the Arts Commission. And, and the Arts Commission mm -hmm. and, and we've got all these people and luckily they all communicate with each other, but you know it is that piece at City Hall. And so, do we, in strategic planning, look at when we trying to figure out at what point do we kind of have this critical mass of effort that says, okay, this has to be a dedicated position within City Hall. So maybe that does become one of our goals. Alderman O'Brien. Well, <clears throat> I'm looking probably for my understanding and clarification. Are we talking about somebody that would, or group that would run the art center and then also have additional? No. 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 Okay. I don't know that they'd have anything to do with the art center okay. directly. I'm, right. I'm thinking of someone who would communicate with, you know, with people in the arts understand what the needs are, and coordinate that with solutions in the city level. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I would see them <clears throat> like being in the contact with the Arts Commission, that that they would kind of be the person who's taking all of that and working that through, and coordinating they, with yeah. DPW and you know Parks and Rec and whomever else mm -hmm. um, to look at what, what needs to happen. So the goal, um, developing capacity within the city in terms of staffing? Um, I, I would just 
categorize it as having in-house expertise to, to recognize and work issues in the arts. I don't know how you put that in a much more positive spin, but... Office, it could be a position in economic right. development. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to your point about cricket fields, yeah. and, and I know Roby Park in the summer you go by and the lights are on, and mm -hmm. they're playing cricket, not baseball. Um, would we want to, again, thinking bigger picture um, that that we're um, involved in assessment and reassessment of the rec recreational needs to guide development of facilities hmm. yeah does that work All right, so shall we move on to number seven? The city of Nashua will ensure that downtown Nashua is a safe, clean, attractive, and accessible urban center. We sort of need to move the promote the vibrancy and yeah. sustain economic development into that goal yeah. somehow. Well, I'm just going to add it to the end. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have uh, when was the last time that uh, there was a, a parking study done, done for downtown, and what can we do to improve the perception uh, of that parking is not available? I'm going to let Director Cummings <laughs> address that. Um, so it's my end again for the record. Uh, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development, and I'm charged with. Uh, parking uh, here in the city. Um, it's my understanding that um, not in recent memory have we done a supply and demand analysis that you're referring to um, by an external third party, uh, Walker or Nelson or any one of those groups. Uh, but internally, I can tell you that um, in-house staff uh, this past summer um, did a, a, a demand analysis on our lots to get an understanding of where we were and how we were running. Uh, but that was, again, an informal um, process that we undertook just to give us some data. Okay. There was some analysis done by Urban Design Associates when we did the downtown master plan. So, okay, so that was 2001, mm, 2005? 2005, probably. I don't know that they did a you know, formal demand analysis, but they did go through an inventory of the parking and look at space counts. Um, to your other question, we're doing right now the uh, wayfinding signage package to help people yeah. to, to unlock the secrets of where the garages are. <laughs> so it, it, there's also... It, as far as demand is also, um, we have to make sure that we have proper cost in, in certain, because right now the thinking is, rather than time limits, it's, it adjusts to how much it costs per space in, in certain places, rather than have time limits. So, so well, that's what we did yeah. uh, a couple of years ago when we, when we changed the structure, was to create the three zones and make mm -hmm. the first zone time limited and more expensive. Yeah. Demand pricing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that needs to be revisited periodically. And the last time we did that was 
five years ago? Has it been yeah. that long? About five yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question. Yes. Uh, yes. When, right when the city was, Kevin Moriarty, when the city uh, recently was, we were doing the downtown sidewalks, there was talk about, uh, at that time, changing the park to angle parking. And I don't know where that went from, from a safety aspect and to fit more cars that was on the board, but then I don't know well, what happened with that. I can tell you what happened with it. Um, what we were looking at was taking one lane out of Main Street so that we'd have, you know, back in diagonal parking. And the miraculous traffic model from NRPC, which is really neat to watch. I mean, you got you, if you've never seen this thing, you need to see it. It actually has little cars driving down there, and it works fine, and it sits there. And at quarter of five, the light at West Hollow Street backs up past Library Hill, and at quarter after five, it empties out again. So um, with the counts that we had, when we looked at that two or three years ago, it was not feasible to do it without taking out half the sidewalk. And I really do not want to take sidewalk <laughs> off of Main Street. Mm -hmm. you, you also only got... The, the block that was feasible to do it in was basically Pearl to West Hollis, and you gained eight or ten parking spaces by doing that. So it wasn't, it just didn't, you know. We could look at it again with the new traffic counts now that the parkway is, is in place, but it just, it doesn't yet look like it's a win. Uh, from a planning aspect, though, is that the current thinking? Do you know, Tim, if angled parking is preferred over 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 what the current uh, parallel. parallel parking? Over parallel parking? Right. I would have to double check. I, I don't know what the research says right now on that. I know I've heard mix in terms of um, consumer preference. Um, you know, in terms of the angle parking as opposed to perpendiculars. I don't know um, what what the current leading thought is on it. I would have to double check. I, I just think that, um, and I was someplace over the weekend, and I thought, oh, this is so lovely and walkable, and I thought, yes, because it doesn't have four lanes of traffic going down the center of it. And and I just think that four lanes of traffic does not promote that comfortable walk around. And on Friday night, I know I've experienced it, and I hear it from people all the time. They love sitting out on Main Street except for the cars and motorcycles racing up and down Main Street as early as 5 and 6 o'clock at night and revving their engines. Mm -hmm. and. And I've just, I've had people say to me, we used to go downtown and eat, but we can't stand the noise anymore. So to that point, um, I think it's very well documented and understood that, you know, road diets to calm the traffic, to get the type of built environment that you're looking for is very well understood if you're trying to create a mixed use, pedestrian friendly um, type, of, type of place. Um, the Infrastructure Committee uh, was pushing my office very aggressively, um, you know, six months ago to start to try to bring that conversation forward, um, you know, relative to how we can slow traffic down on Main Street, try to make it more pedestrian friendly and, and try to, to calm the traffic. Um, I will say though, uh, I said it at the Infrastructure Committee meeting that this was brought up at and I will say it here. Uh, for this room to understand, if we go down that route, the inevitable outcome of that will be congestion. Communities have had this conversation and they've embraced it and they're willing to live with new expectations of how, it, how fast it takes you to get from A to B. But and <coughs> that's an inevitable byproduct that will come about that before we even venture down that conversation, I want everyone to be well aware of. And I, would, I would point out with that that to some extent we've done that already. When we built the parkway mm -hmm. and we changed the lights on Pine and Palm Street, that has had a dramatic <coughs> effect on delays on West Hollis Street, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some work to get around that with the timing of the lights. 
I think people have also found new roots. And to some extent, That's, you know, yeah. if, 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 like you, water. if you change it, they will go. That's right. So <coughs> people will start using the Broad Street Parkway who don't now That's right. if Main Street becomes a little more plugged up. Yeah, in my, yeah. And, and my experience from when Route 3 was being widened, which of course yeah. we're talking about again, but traffic on Main Street became very congested. And right. I think people right. just decided, okay, Main Street's great, and I'm not going to go back to, to the highway. I'll just use the surface route. And to your point, Brian, you know, now we have the Broad Street Parkway, and right. um, you know, as Alderman Shoneman said, sometimes you can probably land a plane on there because no one's using it. And so, you know, if if it's that underutilized, then it's it's obviously there waiting for traffic. Yeah. When yes. when they were widening the turnpike, because I, I I've been looking at the traffic counts on NRPC has an interactive map. You can look at the traffic counts. You go back to 94, 95, there was 30,000 vehicles per day on Main Street. And you look at it now in the, in the 2000s, it's down to like 20,000 vehicles per day. Yeah. So, so this traffic has been going down. And with the Broad Street Parkway, it's probably going to, once they, you know, put more accounts in there, I bet you after, after the Broad Street Parkway, it's probably gone down, down more. The other thing I was disappointed with the Broad Street Parkway was that they, they were going to come out on sarg uh, onto sergeants, and they even had the right of way. So that would have been even nicer because that would have been. So if, if you wanted to go yeah. north uh, across the river, mm -hmm. then you could have, and, and you know, you could have gone around and you could have gone on the Broad Street Parkway and gone that way. You end up almost at the top of Library Hill, but you're over near Holman Stadium, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, water under the bridge now. Right. It's on the tip plan, it's $4 million. Oh, is it really? Oh, good. What? It's on. Uh, it's on the tip. It's on the. Sergeant mm -hmm. Avenue extension. Uh, the uh, connection onto the Broad Street Parkway. Oh for no, Sergeant not Sergeant. Frank. You're talking Franklin. Oh, I'm sorry. You're I'm sorry. Frank Franklin. 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 I was talking Franklin. So, Franklin. Sergeant I never was heard a Sergeant. was a major mess with with the residents when yeah. we had the, yeah. Uh, there was yeah. a proposal to bring it down, and it was a huge grade issue there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's yeah. basically a ramp that had to go down to the. The park 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 yeah, that will yes. yeah, that will gets yeah. to the same end goal. Yeah. You can, if you, when you drive out on on Amherst Street, um, across the street from Sergeant Avenue, you'll see there's a lot that the city owns that has a huge drop off in it, mm -hmm. which is was going to be the extension. Mm -hmm. oh. But it, we it was cut out for a couple of reasons. One, the people in the neighborhood didn't like it. And two, yeah. um, I mean that was a huge cost. cost. That was a twenty yeah. million dollar. Okay another bridge, basically. Mm -hmm. that yeah. 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 Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> to get back to Ms. Moriarty's point on angling parking, to me that's probably going to be the most catastrophic solution that we're going to come up with, with parking. And the reason is I have my reservations about it. <clears throat> the operator in the vehicle is at the farthest point trying to back around you know, backing into traffic, and that's always something yeah, do dangerous. Yeah, parallel park, too. I understand that. But the point is, there's many other different things that we can do before we have to get to that point. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's just catastrophic, you know what I mean? Because once we do it, we're not going back in a relatively short manner. So we really need to digest it and probably come up with other viable solutions before we, you know, even have that idea, in my opinion, across it, and things that I could come up with. Now, I know I agree with the Wayfinder to try to rediscover our parking garages, and, you know, and that's a brilliant, that's one step forward. Look into, once we get people to discover we have parking garages, to re-look at maybe the bus 
going around again to try to get people moving. In other words, if we come up with a coordinated uh, parts of the puzzle plan to fit it all together, we may not have to do something as uh, catastrophic as looking into uh, the heads and parking. I think what we need to do, and then to get into a PR campaign, because us as the average American, and me too, I mean, if I can't be right at your front door, then I consider that, you know, oh my God, I gotta walk yeah. until the wife got me one of these things and counts the steps. So it's all much to the, to the benefit. So the thing is, what you got to do is get the, you know, the average American and our citizens to get them away. That you know, no, you can't really park in front of the front door and having the opportunity that makes convenience is the factor. And I think that's what we're talking about. We're going to have to redesign different programs as economically as we can to be as convenient for uh, you know, citizens to get them to come into something like that. Because even if we went into head and parking, we're probably not going to have enough for everybody. You know what I mean? So, no, but well, it would put a few you know, more places in front of the front door. Yeah, it would. Instead of one, yeah, we'd probably have right. kind of three. It's not, it's not that many when you look at no, it. It's it's not the the, the, Plus, you're, you know. you're going to have to add more access aisles for the handicapped yeah. spaces or the disabled yeah. spaces yeah. that you do have because now they have the curb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we probably would have left the handicapped spaces as parallel. Uh -huh. okay. I think that was what the plan was. So, as long as the sign yeah. is not in the middle of the space because you can't put your ramp down uh, on that. Right. Uh -huh. um, I think Good point. I mean, I, we, we need to figure out what a goal is about parking. And I, I think the, the the fact that we don't have the trolley anymore is indicative of the fact that it may not have been necessary. Downtown's really compact enough that you don't, you know, people, people were riding it for fun. Um, yeah. People were riding it. it. The most disappointing thing about it was it turned out the highest points of ridership were during Pokemon Go tournaments. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, more of those. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I, but, but I think we need, we need to continually understand the parking needs and review that periodically yes. and review the costs. We need to get the first round of the wayfinding signage in there and then we need to continue to look at what is confusing in the downtown to visitors and how do we remedy that? Mm -hmm. Because, I, you know, that. It's it's not just the garages that are a secret. The park the parkway is a secret too. It's, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's hard to yeah. find. For if you're on Main Street, it's hard to find the parkway. If you're on the parkway, it's mm -hmm. almost impossible to find Main Street. So yeah. We need to do whatever is necessary at the yeah. at the terminus of it to get people onto a set of streets. And we need to finish the one way street mm -hmm. review and whether we need to reverse some of the streets. Yeah. There was, a, there was um, I think about 10 years ago or a while ago, there was, they were doing work on Main Street on the north side, and they cut out one southbound direction uh, of travel. And that, uh, it, it was cut out between, I think, Canal Street and Railroad Square. And that queue was all the way back on Amherst Street and all the way back to Broad Street. Mm -hmm. So it that traffic model that you were talking about, I think is, because sometimes what happens in real life and traffic models are different, but I think that was accurate. So if, if you do cut out one, you do, you know, you have four lanes, you cut out one lane, I think we are looking at long, long queues. They um, don't, they're not, they're not bad any other time of the day, except. During the peak hour. Yeah. Peak half, half hour. Half hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Peak yeah. Half hour. You know, it's. Um, but again, Broad Street Parkway isn't being utilized. But so I, th I think we need to look at Main Street, Street. and what right. the requirement is. And I think we we'll sort of have a laboratory to do that this year if we. There's a discussion about moving the farmer's market up onto um, between what Pearl and, and Factory Streets, right. essentially. And what we would do is cut that, is close all but one lane of Main Street for the time the farmer's market's on, on Sunday mornings. And I think that'll give us an opportunity to see, yeah. you know, if the world collapses because we did that, or mm -hmm. do people just find their way around it. 
Um, so I've got parking continually review needs, costs, communication of um, parking information as well as the access routes in and out of the city, and then a complete re complete the review of the one way streets. Um, and, and examine downsizing, of, examine traffic common on Main Street essentially. Um, do we want to put in here, um, kind of around this house, safe, clean, attractive piece, um, something about um, the community partners downtown and and their role in maintaining um, an attractive downtown, as well as um, coordination of city services for safety and street shoveling and <laughs> all of the, I mean, I think that's where all of this is captured. Are we shoveling the streets? Can people get to the right. meters? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I, uh, one of the things I think we need to have there is a better, well, I, I mean, the one we have may be adequate, but we need to review the snow removal plan for, you know, how do we get caught up after a storm? Okay. The sidewalks or streets? Both. Sidewalks. Sidewalks. If, if I you may know, last, follow up. Last here. week we were out, you know, in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a fantastic operation. There were, mm -hmm. took tons and tons of snow off of the sidewalks yeah. in one evening. And, you know, it's just, you got to do that. You got to be ready to do that the day after the storm. To. Mm -hmm. It's a week later and the sidewalks south of Alt Street are still not cleared. Yeah. Wow. And you see people walking there all the time. Yeah. Just the solution to that is coming up in a few days. We call it spring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike. Uh, Mike Rosenblum, I, I think I also heard um, promoting the, the bus routes mm -hmm. in order to help get around. Yeah. Do we want to, um, I'm, I'm trying to think like bigger in terms of just services. So review operations related to just maintaining downtown safety and cleanliness because I'm also thinking and we've seen this in action the cleanup after special events the removing of trash and barriers and those sorts of things so you know like after major either weather events or actual entertainment or downtown events and just put that all in one package yeah I, I mean, there, there, there need to be special plans for right for all downtown. of this. Right. Seems to me they do that really well, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it amazes me to see all the trash, and the next day it's gone. You know? We do it well for the holiday stroll, and we do it well for things that we've you know, planned for in advance. I don't know that we're always as good about it as we sure. are on those nights. Keeping it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, while you're adding items relevant to the safety of downtown, um, lighting of the crosswalks oh, is yeah. extremely mm -hmm. important. We have the flickering lights on, uh, on the bridge that never work. We need to be able to light those so that pedestrians are visible. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. All right. Alderman O'Brien. Um, I want to bring up something you know, that says here, uh, a safe, clean, and attractive. Um, would it be fair to probably ask uh, Mr. Plant to bring back to the police chief and to look and say, maybe come up with an, some ideas for uh, a better police presence and structure for downtown that would enhance. And the point that I'm trying to get to, Mr. Plant, is in front of the uh, library, I understand the city had to do a lot of rework trying to stop skateboarders, you know. And when it comes down to it, I don't think the librarian should be running out there with a broom scaring off, you know what I mean, uh, skateboarders. But could there be something like uh, I know we have motorcycles, but during the warmer climates, motorcycle patrol uh, that would go out to some of our, you know, 
downtown assets along the rivers or the bike. I know we have the bicycle patrol. Uh, to, to come up with maybe something that what is missing there just to see. I'm not at looking to add any other services just to say, is there a better way of doing that? Do we need just to take a, you know, a peek at that and see if we can come up with something uh, a little yeah. bit more operational that would be better? I think those the patrols are there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the I've first thing the to get cut when we right. don't have budget, however. Right. That's right. So the question is, what are they worth to us, and yeah. should we just always fund them? And I, I think the answer is yes. I mean, yes. Yeah. The bike patrols have been tremendously successful. Yeah. Good point for me. Well, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. So Kim. I'm going to go back a couple steps. I absolutely agree with um, Alderman McCarthy, and that. I think that discussion is going to come up shortly um, with you folks. Um, exactly how much is protection worth to the city? And um, I totally agree. It's, it's worth a lot to me. But back to the events, same thing. And, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but it's staffing and mm -hmm. it's money. And you will see going forward in this budget that addressed because we don't have enough money to send out our DPW crews who do a fantastic job cleaning up after these events. And we've upped our events and they've kind of kept mm -hmm. up on, a, on an even budget and they just can't do it anymore. So. How much is the protection worth to us? How much yeah. are the events worth to us? Which I, I think that actually gets to what the real goal is here, which is to make downtown more habited. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I think, frankly, I think this goal is the most important one in this list because it's the promotion of downtown and getting downtown to be more successful that will ultimately drive the tax rate down to where we can then afford to do some of the services that we can't afford to do. I mean, as, as your boss is fond of pointing out, in the whatever six-tenths of a square mile it's downtown, we put very few kids in the school system and generate a tremendous amount of the, of the overall tax revenue. We don't. <laughs> and, and I would just think it, it to your point of downtown, I, I think one of the things we need to do is look at growing downtown off of Main Street. We need to look at that first block on either well, side. I, I was going to, I was going to point out two things. One, it needs to grow laterally from right. Main Street, and right. two, mm -hmm. we also need to promote it to grow ver vertically. Vertically, right. The, the, we need to promote you know, vertical expansion of downtown residential properties, basically. But I think by, I agree with that, and I also think that by growing laterally on each side of Main Street, even if it's a block, it, it just adds to people downtown and people moving yeah. around mm -hmm. and, um, you know, some of us are very comfortable walking Elm Street between City Hall and Pearl, but other people are like, really, you walk there? And it's like, well, yeah, I walk there. Um, and then I point out it's, we're a very safe city. But I think that because we, we have more daytime-only businesses and we don't have businesses that are open till 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night on our side streets, right. It gives that appearance of um, we're pretty much like three blocks of Main Street, and that's it. But I, th I think you know we need to look at the zoning downtown and look at at where we can promote. <clears throat> we can I mean we can promote three and four story residential almost everywhere. There are some places off of Main Street where um, eight or ten stories would probably be appropriate and not burdensome on the surrounding neighborhoods. You know, as you get over towards Spruce Street in that neighborhood there, um, there's some opportunities for higher buildings. When you get over by the Oval and Chestnut Street, you know, where the where the 
uh, warehouse is over there, um, there's opportunities for higher buildings over there, and I think we should try to capitalize on those as much as possible. Because our success really depends on how many people we can have downtown on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. And if I yes, I'll may, no, Brian. If I may, you know, when you to that, I've always said that about this particular city. I mean, coming from the fire department roots, if you look at the Whiting Building, is which is a pretty prominent structure as far as height goes and everything, and yet it was built in probably 1890s, 1900. Mm -hmm. Today's fire equipment, I'm sure Commissioner Grant would say, is much more superior. The tactics are much more that we could afford that with a relative degree of safety between sprinkler systems and everything else like that. It just seems for some reason the city got into a two-story dead block and uh, maybe we should make it known that we are friendly and open to that type of construction. I am, you know what I mean, to operate that because if that enhances office and people will bring more people to the downtown, again, I coupling know. with what we're trying to do mm -hmm. here. So, so it's an economic issue that you need to, and the, the reason I bring this up is because 10 stories is more attractive. Mm -hmm. Four is about as high as you can go with wood frame construction. Right. Above that you go to use steel. There's a tremendous uplift to go to steel for four stories. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten make it cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know, make the first four floors cheaper right. overall. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you're going to go over four, you may as well go to ten if you can. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Um, and and I'm just going to throw this out there. Do we want to have something in Goal 7 about um, the community partners down there? We've got Great America Downtown. We've got the Downtown Association. Yeah, I think we yeah. need to get much closer coordination Should with all the of the stakeholders. entities that, the stakeholders yeah. in downtown. To me. Mm -hmm. We're, we're trying to do that, but every time we try to do it, it snows. <laughs> and I, I just think that as we look at strategic planning, when we think about the downtown stakeholders, um, it's not just the businesses, but there also needs to be input from the people who live there now and the people who are moving in because I think they, they have a lot to say and it's important to hear what they say about how they use the downtown because they're certainly our major supporters of downtown on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of shopping and you know, it's not just they come down and have a drink and dinner or go somewhere. Um, so, any other thoughts? Ms. Kleiner. So, I do think it's important to ask for the feedback, but I would also say to ask for feedback of the residents that don't use downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. um, because one of the things that came up when we were doing some community assessment was some of our um, ethnic groups that said that they did not feel that the shopping or um, the areas on Main Street were particularly sensitive to their needs. So we need to look at that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and as someone who spends a lot of time downtown, I, I don't know. Um, the other thing is housing. So <laughs> how do we look at more housing? Um, the Continuum of Care is doing a housing assessment. Mm -hmm. Um, right now, in fact, they've asked Director Cummings and the mayor to join them at their April meeting um, because they still see an incredible shortage um, in one of the areas that they particularly know is downtown. Um, so even with 
the development, Bridget Sullivan coming on, um, that I'm just passing along. That's one item that they've indicated. And and I would be curious: is there a certain type of housing they're they're seeing a shortage for? Is there is it rental housing? No. So I thought it was sub it was subsidized. Um, but right. one of the areas that they're claiming that they're seeing a shortage is the next step up for so like new people to get entry. out. Right. So yep. they want to move up into some type of ownership, and they um, that middle housing in the two hundred thousand range. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that's the one area that at least they're claiming that a lot of people would like to move out, which would open up the lower income market mm -hmm. if they were able to do that. So, so that actually gets to um, the proposal to look at density bonuses for um, low right. footprint houses that would therefore be cheaper. And if you heard the mayor's state of the city, he made reference to that. That was what he was making reference to. Um, so I guess, you know, it, it's making that, but then it's also, is there a way to make home ownership more affordable? Because there are certainly existing homes that just because people have been lucky and they've appreciated are not as affordable as they may have been when they were originally purchased. Um, so it's it's kind of a, a I think a two prong. There's there may be a need for housing. Do we build it or do we look at how to make currently available homes more affordable? And is there a mechanism for that? Yeah, Alderman O'Brien. Well, you bring up another good point when you get into housing, and particularly within a stone throw at downtown. Most of those structures have been there since the, again, 1890s, 1900. They are pre file code law. Um, due to yeoman's work from the fire department, is why some of them burn and, uh, again, Turns out, unfortunately, they get remodeled with fire stopping and other type of fire protection, so they're a little bit better off than when they originally were, but maybe we, that needs to be addressed. I mean, I think particularly in the downtown area, I want people to live downtown, and I want affordable housing, but I think we could probably enhance and do, a, I agree, a little bit better job for an in-between group there or something like that to make quality safe housing, you know what I mean, down there, that, that would be good. and. Uh, promote the next phase of development. But that's, I think, a little bit farther down the road, but I think we could have that objective, definitely, because uh, it is definitely a need. <clears throat> Eventually, if uh, one of the landlords doesn't take care of the structure, if you build it in 1890, gravity's going to take over. So uh, it, it needs to be addressed, <laughs> you know. So. Yeah. so housing is the other thing for downtown. Any other thoughts, comments? We didn't do enough. <laughs> I don't want anyone to think they didn't have an opportunity to speak. Well, I thank you. Um, the first Tuesday in April has been held for um, PEDC, but I don't think I'm going to need to have a meeting. So um, if that looks good, I may ask Sue to book it for us. And I don't believe Alderman Dowd's scheduled budget because Sue's been holding that to say in case we need it for a backup. PEDC meeting. So, um, 
so we will look at that if it works. If you can, you just make a note for Sue to check um, the first second? Tuesday. Is it the second or the third? Oh, the Tuesday. Tuesday, the, Thursday. the third. Tuesday yeah. The third. So check April third. Yeah. Okay. Um, and ideally for the auditorium. And could I have a motion? Unless there's any other additional comments. I see no one here from the public. Um, a motion? We'll to adjourn. Um, motion by um, Commissioner Plant to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned at 1025. Well, that's 9. nine. Oh, 925. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Two, two different people said it. I got really worried when I saw that. I was like, 